Hello everybody. This week for one of our literacy tasks we are going to do a comprehension and the comprehension that we're going to look at this week is called The Ground Gives Way. It's from a really famous book called Stick of the Dump. Your mums and dads might remember reading it when they were at school. I definitely do. So to make things a little bit different this week what we're going to do is well I'm going to read the story with you. So if you haven't already done so, what I would like you to do is go to the literacy section um, of this week's P6 Home Learning page and download the Ground Gives Way comprehension and have a copy in front of you so that as I read it aloud, you can follow it from your page. So if you need to, pause the video now, go and do that download and then whenever you're ready, we'll be able to get going. Are we ready? Let's read. The Ground Gives Way. If you went too near the edge of the chalk pit, the ground would give way. Barney had been told this often enough. Everybody had told him. His grandmother, every time he came to stay with her. His sister, every time she wasn't telling him something else. Barney had a feeling, somewhere in his middle, that it was probably true about the ground giving way. But still, there was a difference between being told and seeing it happen. And today was one of those grey days when there was nothing to do, nothing to play and nowhere to go, except to the chalk pit, the dump. Barney got through the rickety fence and went to the edge of the pit. This had been the side of a hill once, he told himself. Men had come to dig away chalk and left this huge hole in the earth. He thought of all the sticks of chalk they must have made and all the blackboards in all the schools they must have written on. They must have dug and dug for hundreds of years. And then they got tired of digging. Or somebody had told them to stop before they dug away all the hill. And now they did not know what to do with this empty hole. And they were trying to fill it up again. Anything people didn't want, they threw into the bottom of the pit. He crawled through the rough grass and peered over. The sides of the pit were white choke with lines of flints poking out like bones in places. At the top was crumbly brown earth and the roots of the trees that grew on the edge. The roots looped over the edge, twined in the air and grew back into the earth. Some of the trees hung over the edge, holding on desperately by a few roots. The earth and chalk had fallen away beneath them and one day they too would fall to the bottom of the pit. Strings of ivy and the creeper called Old Man's Beard hung in the air. Far below was the bottom of the pit, the dump. Barney could see strange bits of wreckage among the moss and elder bushes and metals. Was that the steering wheel of a ship? The tail of an aeroplane? At least there was a real bicycle. Barney felt sure he could make it go if only he could get at it. They didn't let him have a bicycle. Barney wished he was at the bottom of the pit and the ground gave way. Barney felt his head going down and his feet going up. There was a rattle of falling earth beneath him. Then he was falling, still clutching the clump of grass that was falling with him. This is what it's like when the ground gives way, thought Barney. Then he seemed to turn a complete somersault in the air, bumped into a ledge of chalk halfway down crashed through some creepers and ivy and branches and landed on a bank of moss. 
His thoughts did those funny things they do when you bump your head and you suddenly find yourself thinking about what you had for dinner last Tuesday, all mixed up with seven times six. Barney lay with his eyes shut, waiting for his thoughts to stop being mixed up. Then he opened them. He was lying in a kind of shelter. Looking up, he could see a roof, or part of a roof, made of elder branches, a very rotten old carpet, and rusty old sheets of iron. There was a big hole through which he must have fallen. He could see the white walls of the cliff, the trees and creepers at the top and the sky with clouds passing over it. Barney decided he wasn't dead. He didn't even seem to be very much hurt. He turned his head and looked around him. It was dark in this den after looking at the white chalk and he couldn't see what sort of a place it was. It seemed to be partly a cave dug, in, dug into the chalk Partly a shelter built out over the mouth of the cave. There was a cool, damp smell. Wood lice and earwigs dropped from the roof where he had broken through it. But what had happened to his legs? He couldn't sit up when he tried to. His legs wouldn't move. Perhaps I've broken them, Barney thought. What shall I do then? He looked at his legs to see if they were all right and found they were all tangled up with creeper from the face of the cliff. Who tied me up? thought Barney. He kicked his legs to try to get them free, but it was no use. There were yards of creeper trailing down from the cliff. I suppose I got tangled up when I fell, he thought. Except I would have broken my neck if I hadn't. He lay quiet and looked around the cave again. Now that his eyes were used to it, he could see further into the dark part of the cave. There was somebody there or something. No. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to read through the story one more time. You could listen to it again with me reading it or you can read it by yourself and then go to the next video because in the next video we'll tell you all about what your tasks are for this week. Okay, let's go and read the story one more time. We'll see you in a minute.